We're going to turn it over to our first group, Coalition Builder. Give it up for Coalition Builder. Test. Does that work? Yeah. All right. Perfect. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're Team Coalition Builder. Can I just get you guys to raise your hand? My name is Tobias Warnett. I'm with Microsoft out of New York City. And with me? My name is Melissa Medina, and I am a recovering Congressional Hill staffer. Been on the Hill for four years. And we focused on how to improve the lawmaking process. So just uh, for everyone, very high level, um, it usually starts with an idea. Then there's a lot of research that's being done, and then eventually the bill gets drafted. As all of that's happening, there's also coalition building that's going on, right? People look for support. Who's done this before? Um, which brings us to the problem that we've been solving over the last two days. We really focused in on the co congressional staffer to understand their problem. And since you've been one, why don't you share some of the struggles that you've had? And actually, as we're, how do I advance the slide? That one? Sorry about that. Perfect. So one of the biggest problems is as a congressional staffer, when you have an idea and a legislation, you're thinking about where do I start? How do I start building support? There are 435 members in Congress, 100 are in the Senate, and 435 are in the House. And you're thinking to yourself, where do I even begin? How do I start to build this list? Let me filter through all the previous bills, all the previous co-sponsorships, all of these different searches that you have to do, wasting a lot of time. And not only am I crashing on this issue, I'm crashing on nine other issues as, as a congressional staffer. Secondly, while there are tools like Quorum and BGov that are available to aggregate this kind of information, congressional staff, and their budgets are very, very limited, right? So when a staffer basically makes about $30,000 a year and upwards of six grand goes to one of these current programs, that's a third of a staffer's salary. In reality, how are, how are staffers or how are staff offices supposed to afford that? So Melissa, what I'm hearing you say is you're spending a lot of time on this. Um, there's a lot of manual process going into this. And if you opt into a subscription model, it's extremely expensive. Are there any congressional staffers in here, in the audience? Do you feel like this every day? You felt like this before? OK. So it's a big problem, right? It's a big problem. And it's not just congressional staffers. It's also Senator, Senator Booker said, and I'm quoting, I'm interested in working across the aisle. But, and this is important, I don't have a good way to see where my colleagues stand on specific issues to identify possibilities for collaboration. And since you've been there, tell us a little bit about our solution that we came up with. So Coalition Builder has built a free research tool for any congressional staff and even the public or any advocacy organizations to utilize to help filter based on different criteria such as co-sponsorships, sponsors, various letters that they signed on to. And I want to go ahead and take it away with the demo. And we'll turn it over to Dan and Eric in the back. Thank you. So what we're going to do is bring up a working prototype we have. Uh, it's pulling in live data from the Sunlight Foundation and elsewhere. And just to quickly show how, this, how Coalition Builder might fit into that process you just described. So as an example, say you're working on patent legislation or patent reform. You might start with that topic. So you type, type in patents. Coalition Builder returns a list of congressional members who have sponsored legislation on that topic. It's kind of a wide net, so you can use our filters to drill down by chamber. Uh, so House of Representatives, you could then go to Republicans. Uh, and then additionally, to narrow it down further, filter by committee. So bring up House Committee on Judiciary. We're down to three people. Um, so that's kind of a good place to start. And then back up at the top, you could export this data as a CSV uh, and integrate it into your current workflow. And because I was looking for the clicker, we actually ran out of time. Um, can we go, just go back to the slide? Because as we're taking questions, this, our team has done amazing work in the last 24 hours. We've gotten great feedback from congressional staffers. Um, just imagine how much more we can do if we had more time.
So with that, I would like to open it up for questions. Um, I also ask you to uh, please read through our next steps so you get a better understanding. And then also, I would love to get a sense from you. Are you leaning in on this, or are you leaning back? So with that, um, I would also invite the team to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. We got our first question from Holly. So this, I think this is great. Can you guys speak a little bit more about the classification schema you're going to use? One of my concerns is that it might be hard to track and use this data to effectively empower these searches if people are trying to collaborate on new or innovative issues that can't easily be classified. And that's a good question. I'm going to leave it to Eric to answer for that technical purpose. So for the most part on the technical side of things, as long as you can have, if you have data sets that you are interested in filtering on or correlating information with, I can do that correlation for you. So what we brought up so far was just the information with their um, commissions, their backgrounds, and then we have their sponsored bills. But we can take it a step further with, with any other databases and repositories we have access to. And there are many more available. Also, if, if you look at slide, uh, actually step three of our next steps, we would do an in-depth pilot with some congressional staffers and do a role analysis um, because form follows function, right? We need to have a very good idea of what their job is to improve the tool. Yeah, I have one question. I see you're, you're obviously targeting staffers, but it seems to me this is a very flexible system. I mean, have you thought about applications from people, say, outside of Congress who want to think about where they go to for this kind of coalition building? So that's a really great question. And actually, the model that we have built is very scalable. And one thing is, um, Rebecca, who is also from an outside organization, said this is a great tool for anybody outside even congressional staff to use. If they're working, let's say, on an immigration issue, where do they even start? Who do they target? Coming from the outside, it's even hard to understand how Congress works. It's a puzzle, right? Who do you even go to? So this tool can be used for the general public. And in our fifth slide, or in our fifth step, we would, or fourth step, I believe, we would look to roll it, rolling out this with the public after we've tested it in Congress. And on a technical side, the everything you see there is all based on REST APIs. And right now, of course, it's just basic JSON objects back and forth. But we would like to get it with more of a standardized XML format that fits with the rest of the tools available out to government already. Okay. Any final questions? All right, let's have a round of applause for Coalition Builder. Woo